I've mentioned several times before that there are often edge effects at the boundaries of time series anytime you are applying a filter. Now, edge effects are pretty much unavoidable. However, that doesn't mean that edge effects need to contaminate the entire signal. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a procedure called reflection. And reflection is a way of avoiding edge effects contaminating the signal by basically adding additional versions of the signal to the beginning of the signal and the end of the signal. And then the idea is that the edge effects will contaminate those new edges and then you cut them off. So the reason why you get edge effects with filters like FIR filters and IIR filters is because each time point in the filtered signal is defined to be a weighted combination of previous values of the original signal. And for IAR filters, it might also be a product of weighted values of the previous version of the filtered signal. Anyway, you can imagine that this filter cannot actually start all the way at time point one because this kernel wants to go backwards in time and there is nothing backwards in time. So in fact, this filtered signal can really only begin at one kernel length into the signal. So the first time point in the filtered signal would be somewhere around here. Now, the way to avoid that, the way to have the filtered signal start and stop at the boundaries of the original signal is to apply a procedure called reflection. So I'm going to give you a bit of an idea of how reflection works. And once you have the intuition, I'm going to switch to MATLAB and you will see how this looks in practice. So here is some signal, and then the idea of reflection is to take exactly the same signal, but mirror it, so have it go backwards. And then you put the backwards version of the signal here, and again the backwards version of the signal here. So then it looks something like this. Now, this part of the signal and this part of the signal are both identical to each other, and they're also identical to this real signal, but flipped backwards. Now the nice thing about that is you get these smooth transitions here and here, and then this reflected signal becomes filtered. So all the edge effects are gonna be present here, and there might be some edge effects here depending on the nature of the filter. But that doesn't matter because after you've finished filtering, you cut off these boundaries here, or you, I should say the, the reflected parts of the signal. You cut off the reflected parts of the signal and what you are left with is a filtered version of the signal with no edge effects. Now, if you have a relatively short time series, you can simply reflect the entire time series. Otherwise, you don't need to reflect the entire time series. You can just reflect the piece of the time series that is as long as the filter kernel, so the order of the filter. So in practice, you might not need to reflect everything here. You might only want to reflect, let's say, up to here. Okay, let's switch to MATLAB, and I will show you how this looks in code. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB. I'm going to create an artificial signal. I'm creating this signal by first generating a Gaussian. So you might recognize e to the minus 4 times the natural log of 2 times the frequency vector shifted by the peak frequency of the Gaussian, then divided by 0.1, which is the full width at half maximum, and all that business squared. I discussed the Gaussian in this form in the video in the previous section. So the section was time domain denoising, and the video was something about Gaussian smoothing a time series. Okay, so basically this is going to create a Gaussian. And what I do here is pointwise multiply that Gaussian by random phase values. So these are random numbers between 0 and 2 pi. And then I insert them into Euler's formula. And this gives me complex unit length random vectors, which are then multiplied by this Gaussian. And then I take the inverse Fourier transform. And essentially, this is just one way of creating a signal that has a lot of random numbers within some frequency boundaries. So let me show you what this signal looks like and its power spectrum. So here you see the signal. There is some randomness, so there's some random numbers here, but clearly this is not a purely random signal. It's also going up and down. You can see that there's some oscillations in here. 
and that's because this is the power spectrum of this signal. So you can see there's a Gaussian here that peaks at 0.1, and these are normalized frequency units, so 1 is the sampling rate and 0.5 is the Nyquist frequency. Okay, so this is just some interesting signal to work with. What I want to do now is show you what a low-pass filter will look like this, and actually this is called causal filter, but that's wrong. It should be zero-phase filter. So what I do is, uh, let's see, first I generate the uh, filter kernel using FIR1, and I specify that the cutoff should be 0.6, and this is a low-pass filter. Remember, again, that 0.6 is in terms of the Nyquist frequency, so this is not the same as 0.6 over here. So 0.6 here actually corresponds to 0.3 on this plot. Okay, so 150 order FIR1 derived filter kernel. Then I filter the signal, flip the signal backwards, filter that, and then filter or then turn that filtered signal around again. So this is the zero phase shift filter here, these three lines of code. And then I'm just going to plot it and then also plot the power spectrum on top of this one. So when you look at this figure, you see, let me open this up a little bit more. You see here that the filtered version looks an awful lot like the original version, but it's filtered, so that's no surprise. That's exactly what the goal was here. However, uh, you can see it's also flat here, so we're kind of missing a big chunk of signal here. In fact, this is like nearly 20% of the signal that we're missing here. So this is not very good. This is due to an edge effect from the filtering. You can also see that the power spectrum looks a little bit disappointing, I have to say. You know, you would expect the power spectrum to look pretty much exactly like the original power spectrum, the black line, below the cutoff frequency of around 0.3. But they are not exact, and the reason why they are not exact is because of this edge effect. So I'm going to solve this problem using reflection. So here's what I do. I reflect the signal, so I create a new variable, reflect sig, and that is the signal, but before the signal, I put a backwards version of the signal, and then after the signal, I put another backwards version of the signal. Now, in this case, I'm not going to reflect the entire duration of the signal. I could do that by saying end, skip minus one, skip one, and then here this would go to one. Instead, I'm only reflecting the length of the filter kernel. So let's see, so this is now 800 elements long, this reflects sig variable 800 elements, whereas the original signal was only 500 elements. So because I set the order to be 150, there's 150 extra data points here and 150 extra data points here at the end. Now, this part is exactly the same. This is still the zero phase shift filter but I'm not filtering the signal, I'm filtering the reflected version of the signal. Okay, and now here you have to chop off the reflected bits. So now this ends up being 500 points long, which is exactly how long the original signal is. And then I'm gonna plot again, so. That you see here, these lower plots. Now the pink line here is identical to the pink line here, but what we've gained is all of this business here. So now we don't have an edge effect. Technically, there was an edge effect, but the edge effect is in this variable reflect sig, and it's outside the boundaries. The edge effect is outside the boundaries that we actually care about. And now these power spectra look closer to what you would expect. They are identical, or at least you know, within visual precision, they are identical before and after filtering. And then you only see the difference here once you get up to 0.3, which was the spectral cutoff for the filter. Now, if you have the signal processing toolbox in MATLAB, you can also use a function called filt filt. It's filt filt because it filters and then it filters again. So essentially it's doing what this is doing here. So it filters the signal forward, flips it backwards, filters, flips it again, and it's doing some reflection in here already. So I'll run this line. And then let's see what this looks like. So I'll make a new figure. Let's say plot one through n, and then I'll plot the f signal 
and then 1 through n and f signal 1. So you actually only see one line here, and that's because they are pretty much identical, not exactly exactly identical. So the filt filt function is doing a little bit of additional padding. So the results are not going to be really identical at the edges, but we can see we can correlate these two. So core, uh, let's see, we have f signal and f signal one. And these two are variables are correlated at 0.9999. So you don't really get much more correlated than that. So if you're ever wondering what the function filt filt does, then it's basically doing this. It reflects the signal, it filters twice, and then reflecting again, or sorry, uh, flipping again, and then it cuts off the edges. So the question is whether you always need to reflect the signal anytime you want to apply a filter. And the answer is, it depends. Perhaps you already know that there's going to be extra time series that you don't care about. Let's say, you know, you have this whole time series, but you only care about 200 to 400 time units here. So in that case, you know that there's going to be an edge effect here, but you don't need to worry about it because you were already going to cut off the plot. So if that's the case, then you don't need to worry about reflection. Otherwise, in general, I recommend doing reflection. It really helps get rid of the edge effect and it helps preserve as much of the original signal as possible.